The Immersive Digital Experiences Alliance is a nonprofit industry association developing a family of royalty-free technical specifications to enable the digital future. Our members bring world-class experience in light field and holographic imaging, distribution networks, and content creation. You can learn more at immersivealliance.org. The IDEA Specialized Contract Track consists of eight segments covering all aspects of immersive media. In this segment, Looking Glass Factory co-founder Alex Hornstein will explain how light field or holographic displays are revolutionizing 3D storytelling and other markets. Hi and welcome. I'm Debbie Fitzgerald. I'm the Director of Immersive Media Experiences at Cable Labs. Cable Labs is also one of the co-founders of IDEA, who's bringing this track to you today. I'm here with Alex Hornstein, CTO and co-founder of Looking Glass Factory, who's also a member of IDEA, and he's here to talk to us about Looking Glass Factory. Hi, Alex. Hi, Debbie. Thanks for having me on. Hey, you're welcome. Good to see you. Alex, could you share with us um, uh, some information about Looking Glass Factory and your products? Sure thing. Uh, so Looking Glass Factory, we're a startup that started in 2014. And for our entire existence, we've been pursuing this dream of the hologram, the thing that we saw growing up in science fiction movies and working on how to bring that into reality. So this pursuit, this idea that in the future, we work with computers in a different way, it's not just on a flat rectangle, has led us down many different technological paths as we work on both the software and the hardware to render and bring holograms into the real world. And starting in 2018, we launched uh, a line of displays that uh, are called the looking glass displays. These are light field displays that can uh, work together with software to in real time render holograms from a virtual scene and bring that into a room so a group of people can see holographic imagery. This display uh, tied in really well with the zeitgeist. Something about it touched a nerve and we saw a lot of good pickup among 3D creators, um, everyone from modelers, game designers, uh, people working in data visualization, all across this space, we started seeing a lot of uh, uh, both uh, uh, individuals and professionals who were working on complex 3D creations and wanted to show them to a group of people in the room without having to wear headgear or pause to, to go into another space. Uh, in November 2019, we launched our most recent product, which is the Looking Glass Immersive 8K display which is a very large 32 inch holographic display that uh, starts to go into workplaces. So now we started seeing pickup, not just among individuals and uh, solo 3D creators, but also moving into places working on holographic mapping or uh, 3D medical imagery. And we started seeing a lot more pickup into professional environments where there's groups of people working in areas that require spatial awareness and they need at a glance to be able to look over and understand a spatial relationship in a three-dimensional scene. Yeah, that's great. I, I actually can vouch for that. Um, Cable Labs has two of your looking glasses. We started with one of the, you know, your original form factor, the kind of the smaller form factor. And, and I think that's even really compelling, especially with the frog, the interactive frog. I love that one. Um, and we also recently acquired the, the 8K. And I can tell you, it's, it not only is it really compelling to just get the point across of what immersive experiences could do, not only just for a single person, but for multiple people in the room. But also, uh, I've got a, a new college grad working for me who's who's already hit the ground running and is building content for it. It's, it's also pretty easy to stand up compelling content on the displays as well. That's so, great. Well, I'm glad to hear they're working for you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, uh, it's, I, I, I only wish that I could show it off to more people right now, you know, working from home. It's, it's, it's definitely harder to get the point across. Tell me about it. 
So, um, so, you know, one of the things that everybody's excited about too, is what, what this is really going to do for, um, uh, 3d storytelling. Can you tell us how, you know, some examples of how this is going to revolutionize 3d storytelling? Yeah. So, um, that's a really good question and it's very, uh, close to home. So since we started making, uh, three-dimensional displays, we've looked at ways to capture 3D imagery of the real world and to, to pull that in to the displays we're making. And going back uh, four or five years, I would um, use like a huge collection of wires and cables and depth cameras to capture uh, my, my daughter's first steps. Uh, and pulling this in, even as kind of rudimentary imagery, uh, to me was powerful, just the, this idea that we're able to capture moments that I can emotionally connect to and display these in our technology. But where this started really turning into storytelling was later on uh, in 2018, I remember this moment where one of our developers, Missy Santeo, uh, worked with an illustrator and they built what was the first narrative in uh, a looking glass. And this was a three minute scene that was wonderfully illustrated by uh, Noka Wu and was uh, built into a, this three dimensional, almost like a, um, like a puppet theater uh, in a 3D environment by Missy. And this struck me as remarkable when um, they built this story that's a wonderful story about a, uh, a girl who has a relationship with a, a fish that lives in the ocean. And I remember showing it to a group of students, a university student during a lecture. And when it was done, uh, I turned the lights back on and one of the students was in tears. And uh, I looked at that and I was like, oh my God, this is powerful. You know, for the first time we're seeing someone emotionally connect enough to a character they've never seen before, but that they, that emotion came through the, the media and it, it hit home. So since then, we've started moving further into uh, professional storytelling. So we've done work uh, with Intel Studios last year that did a very large shot uh, with uh, the producer of Grease, uh, where they filmed a, a huge dance number in one of their, uh, their volumetric studios. And they displayed this. So they built, uh, they took this content that they had built and they were able to show this uh, wonderfully produced content in looking glasses to large groups of people. Uh, uh, which was fantastic. And then uh, we also saw uh, other very um, uh, interesting areas of work. So um, a good example is a, a demo that uh, we just uh, produced with Cable Labs, where uh, working together with another partner in the, um, in the field, Visby, they were able to film a scene and stream that live uh, through a cable labs network and pull that into uh, or through charter with uh, um, with charter rather through um, uh, through charter's network and pull that into a looking glass display. So this sort of professional production started uh, building up and I think becoming more and more remarkable as we see more uh, talented creators who are able to to use both tools they're familiar with and new new forms of media and capture to create compelling content for these displays. Yeah, Alex, and and, and actually you were you were right about Visby too. Visby was also a, a, a partner in that um, in that production along with Charter, and uh, and in fact there are other tracks in this idea segment that we're bringing to the Simti. Um, uh, conference that will cover some more details on that too. So if you haven't tuned into those already, you can do that. Um, so, so those are some really exciting um, opportunities in storytelling and markets. Are there other markets that uh, Looking Glass Factories uh, displays are being used in? Yeah, so the uh, so where we first started was really in this area of 3D creators, which is extremely broad. Uh, and you know covers anyone who's working from architects to uh, you know someone build, building 3D animations. And moving specifically this year, we started seeing pickup in commercial spaces. So we started seeing pickup amongst uh, folks working with mapping. So there's a lot of three-dimensional uh, image capture and mapping in everything from things like uh, uh, 
uh, uh, driverless cars that are moving around have to build a 3D picture of the world to um, real-time imagery uh, that's being generated of, of the planet and being able to pull those in and look at them and at a glance understand what's going on is very powerful. Um, also seeing projects with partners in uh, medical imaging, so uh, things like CAT scans, MRIs are natively three-dimensional information that we always look at on a two-dimensional screen. And doctors and radiologists are very well trained to look and understand this, but uh, being able to bring sometimes very complex spatial relationships and make those natively three-dimensional uh, it means that there's less of a barrier for understanding. And that's where I see this really amazing hook that lets us into spaces like this, is it allows a at a glance understanding of a complicated scene. Um, and one final one I wanted to bring up was uh, work in um, uh, computational chemistry. So seeing mm -hmm. folks who are working on drug relationships and uh, drug design, where traditionally you would do this in uh, petri dishes. And with advanced software, you've been able to simulate drug interactions in uh, a purely 3D, purely virtual environment. What's interesting about those interactions is these are all spatial. You know, here's a, a molecule. How does it bond with another molecule? And so the simulation doesn't need a display, but a researcher needs to be able to look at a complex, again, spatial arrangement and think about how am I going to adjust this? How am I going to move that? And so being able to have that at a glance very easily is really important and starts to tie in quickly with workflows using familiar tools and familiar creations that uh, people are using in the real world right now. Well, that's 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 very cool. And it's really interesting how many, you know, how broad the uh, the, the market space is for this. So what does the future hold for these types, types of displays? Do you um, see it hold, um, you know, is there a future for it in the home and for work use or, or even work from home? Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> all of us, we're, right now? Yeah. <laughs> we're definitely, uh, all of us have a looking glass on our desk right now in our work from home environment. Um, but uh, well, as far as the future, um, we're taking a, a new step into the future starting on December 2nd. And this will be our, our next step as a company uh, towards this wonderful vision of a holographic future. So uh, I can't say more now, there's a little more on our site. So if you're curious, go take a look. Um, as far as the further future, and as these displays start to get into our, our homes, as they start to get into our, our work, uh, there's, uh, one thing that we see is uh, this idea of all three-dimensional creation interaction is very, very broad. And my hunch is the thing that brings a display in is a very specific combination of software and expertise and display, you know. So I gave examples of these three where we started seeing initial traction in work. And as we move forward, we start seeing... Uh, things like uh, media creation. We start seeing things like gaming. These have very specific ways that groups will uh, create for them and that users will interact with them and that a 3D display can add to that user experience. Uh, one of these is going to be a hit and that'll be the first inroad that starts to place them in larger numbers into homes. And once you have that hit, there's a lot of interesting things start to happen. So one is your audience grows. That begins, begins a snowballing effect. So you start to attract more creation. You start to attract more content and more, it starts to broaden out uh, across multiple users. There's, you don't have to just be one particular focus type of user. You can use it across multiple uh, activities. You could use it for work. You could use it for entertainment. You could use it for uh, your hobby or to, to look at uh, holographic photos of your family. and uh, so starting to see how this spreads, we uh, constantly build and release uh, experimental and early stage software to see what enters and what starts to, to touch into, um, what touches the nerve with creators on these different areas. And when we see something pick up, we push very hard into that direction. 
And as we start getting pickup, another really interesting thing is it won't just be us. So, you know, we're one company. We want this to be an industry. We want holographic display to be an entire segment of the market. And that's one reason why idea is very relevant to us and very fascinating is uh, as holographic displays make their first inroads into homes, there will be a larger and larger amount of holographic content that for some displays will be very specialized. You know, the difference between uh, a, uh, a, a head mounted display and a looking glass, which requires nothing on your head is actually there's a very different content production pipeline for it. And one of the interesting things IDEA is doing is setting standards for how a particular piece of content could be mastered for different displays. And uh, this is gonna be uh, really relevant as we start seeing more and more of this content coming out. So that's one of the, the reasons we're part of this group and why we think this is a, a really interesting effort. Well, that's great, Alex. And um, I think that, uh, you know, I agree with you. This is just an exciting future and I can't wait to see what's next. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us in this segment from the Immersive Digital Experiences Alliance. IDEA is a nonprofit industry group developing a family of royalty-free technical specifications to enable the digital future. You can learn more at immersivealliance.org. You can join IDEA, download the ITMF specifications or white paper, or just join our mailing list to stay informed. Thanks for joining us today.